Evening, everyone. Just giving a moment for everyone to get connected to their audio. You'll probably be able to hear the thunder rolling in the background on mine. So if things happen, we're just going to roll with it tonight. Whatever happens, happens. And hopefully, hopefully it uh, obliges our evening for us. Let's see, I think everyone is, looks good. So welcome to our Meet the Experts evening. Tonight we're going to be talking about gas. So tips for prevention, tips to relieve gas um, from several of our doulas. Then after that, we're going to go into breakout rooms. So each attendee is welcome to join us for a breakout room. And if you are planning on staying, could you please note that in the chat so that we can have those breakout rooms set up and ready to go when we're done the presentation section. And during that time, you get a chance to chat with the doulas privately and have some great conversation with them. So uh, let's get started. Our first doula speaking is Sharon Clements, and she is a postpartum doula. Go ahead, Sharon. Good evening, everybody. Uh, yes, I'm Sharon, and I am a postpartum doula. I uh, do po mostly uh, overnights, evening shifts. Um, been with uh, Helping Hands for quite a while and totally enjoy snuggling these little people. Uh, so my tip for um, trying to cut back on some gas is being the opposite of James Bond. Instead of shaken and stirred, we're gonna go for stirred, not shaken. <clears throat> so with the any babies that are um, on a bottle, whether they're having uh, pumped breast milk or they're having a um, formula, we don't wanna shake the bottle before we give it to them because babies don't do good with milkshake. So what we're gonna do is if it is breast milk, you will see separation a lot of times at the top where the cream has congealed a little bit around the top of the bottle and that's great um, and you really don't need a lot of um, uh, vigor to uh, get that that cream uh, mixed with the milk uh, if you do have a bottle warmer it's good because once the bottle is warm that usually will melt it enough to blend in with the other milk but just by swirling swirl it around um, don't shake it, swirl it or use a spoon to stir it. And that will mix all of your milk nicely together. Um, if you are uh, going to give the baby formula, a lot of people like to give formula um, as they go along. So they'll make the bottle now for the baby for now. Um, a lot of times you're really tempted to shake that bottle because you want that powder to dissolve. So if possible, stir it, uh, swirl it, um, or make it ahead of time. So if you can make it half an hour ahead of time, it's had time for those bubbles to settle, come up to the top and to settle. So that is my tip. Um, no James Bond with your babies. <laughs> Do the opposite. Swirl, don't shake. So that's my tip for tonight. I hope everybody has a good night. Thank you, Sharon. No one's going to forget that. <laughs> I'm going to think of that every time I do a bottle now. <laughs> uh, next, we're going to hear from Heidi, who is also a postpartum doula. Oh, you're still muted, Heidi. <laughs> That's pretty wonky, too. <laughs> okay, my topic is wonky winding. Um, when it comes, it's a sort of a burping philosophy that comes from England. And in England, they call gas wind. So if you're burping a baby, you're winding the baby. And it's kind of a neat uh, concept because it uses uh, the biological shape of the baby's stomach and how we get gas most efficiently out of that stomach. So the way you can see if we have like a gassy bottle of pop, there's a, our gas is at the very top, close to the opening and we can release the bottle and let the gas out. Unfortunately, a baby's stomach is not the shape of a bottle. So um, it's more of a sort of like a kidney shape. So gas can sometimes get here at the top of the tongue and we want it to 
So simply by tilting the baby a little bit to the left, we get some of this blood to move over to the opening. And so that's all wonky winding is. It's having your baby in an over the shoulder kind of burping position, but you make it wonky. You just tilt them over a little bit and then you're allowing that gas to get closer to the opening to come out. You can do that in a sitting position. You're gonna, you know, lean them a little bit to the left if you want them. It's just something to think about, something to be maybe a little bit of a helpful uh, tip. So just think lean left to let it out. And um, you can certainly look it up on uh, Google, wonky winding, and it's kind of, it gives you a good explanation. So thank you so much. And I look forward to talking to everybody later on. Thank you, Heidi. You both have had such great like comparisons. Now I've got to come up with one for mine. <laughs> um, next, we're going to hear from Christine A., who is a postpartum doula. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, one of the things I thought about with air was babies swallow a lot of air when they cry. And I really don't believe in babies crying. I try to never let them cry. Um, one of the reasons a brand new baby cries is they absolutely hate being cold and they detest when they are, um, their startle reflex is, is activated. So if, if they feel safe and enclosed, they're not gonna cry. One of the times they cry the most is that diaper changes in the first couple of weeks. So there's a few ways to deal with that. I think Sharon likes a hair dryer. Um, I like to make a little seat belt for the baby, I call it. I will fold a uh, receiving blanket until it's the size of their chest, the width of their chest. And then I'll just wrap their arms and tuck the ends under their body. And then I can change the diaper and they feel warm and surrounded and held. And I found that's really effective for helping them not to cry in those first few days and early weeks. After a while, they'll be fine with diaper changes, but just in the beginning, they really hate that. And that can cause them to cry a lot. And then um, they can cry because they're cold in the bath. So I like that to be warm enough. And then of course, if we attend to our babies, when they cry, they'll never get into that really heavy crying at the beginning. Sometimes they will, but we'll do our best because it does cause them to swallow air. Thank you, Christine. Um, I guess it's my turn. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Amanda Kennedy. I'm also a postpartum doula with Helping Hands. And one of the things that I think is kind of a great thing to put in the back of your head is timing the amount of time you spend burping. So I know in the middle of the night, especially when we're tired and we think we've spent a lot of time burping and it's actually really only been a couple of minutes and that can even happen to us doulas who are there and ready and prepared to be awake. So it's very easy to happen to parents who are very ready to go back to sleep. But if you spend the time burping long enough and get that gas relieved, then you're more likely to have a longer restful period in between feedings. So it can take up to 10 minutes or longer, but you know, 10 minutes is a good starting point, especially at the end of a feeding to make sure that you've gotten that burp out. So I like to set a timer, take a look at a clock and say, okay, it's 1230 in the morning by 1240. I will stop if I haven't gotten a burp out, but really committing to a decent amount of time to get that burp out because I personally would rather spend the 10 minutes getting the burp out and then sleeping for a couple hours <laughs> rather than waking up half an hour later and having to deal with an uncomfortable baby. Um, I also just noticed in the chat that another participant has noted that they will be staying for the um, breakout rooms. Please note that if you are staying so that we can have that organized. And next we have Mandeep. Hi, everyone. And welcome. My name is Mandeep and I am a postpartum doula with Helping Hands. And I'm going to be talking about uh, the importance of slow paced bottle feeding 
if you are bottle feeding, it is important to keep in mind that when you do bottle feed to do it at a very, very slow pace. And by that means that you're going to be holding your baby in an upright position. So let's pretend my head, my hand is the head, baby's head and the baby is going to pretty much be in an upright position. So I usually like to tell um, parents, you know, to have their head either facing uh, at 11 o'clock position or one o'clock position, depending if you're left or right handed. And then I usually will take the bottle and I will feed the and then the bottle will usually be tilted slightly so that the milk will so that the nipple will be partially full of the milk. And it's okay if it's not fully, the nipple is not fully full of milk, as some of you think that, oh, the, the air, the gap will cause gas. It actually doesn't. It's just, it's the slow paced feeding method. So that with that, it's going to mean that you're going to be tilting the bottle slightly, allowing the baby to take a few sucks. They're going to be swallowing like so, uh, like maybe one, maybe three or four swallows. And then you're going to tilt the bottle, just the bottle, not their body or anything. You're just going to tilt the bottle down slightly, but you're not going to take it out of their mouth, which because the taking in and out of the mouth does create the gas. So just tilting the bottle down while the nipple is still in there, the baby will continue sucking and that's okay. And then just wait, waiting a couple of seconds and then tilting the bottle back, allowing them to continue, continue drinking and then repeating, you know, again, allowing them to take three or four sips, uh, swallows, then tilting down, waiting a few seconds and then allowing them to swallow again. And keeping in mind that the baby should be in an upright position, it is key. The baby should not be lying flat as you're, uh, as they are taking the bottle. They should be, their head should be again, either 11 o'clock position or one o'clock position. Thank you, Mandeep. Slow paced bottle feeding is always an important thing to learn. I love that you talked about that. Um, next, we have Jessica Johnston. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm a postpartum doula uh, at Helping Hands. And um, so what I decided to talk about tonight is sort of echoing what Amanda talked about earlier and um, a little bit Heidi as well. But I think that's okay because it's so important and um, I think that it's one of the easiest things to want to not do. So I'm going to sort of gloss over a couple things that we already talked about, but upright time um, is so key after you're done a feed. So you're going to spend a lot of time as a new parent feeding your baby, whether it be um, with a bottle or chest feeding, um, you know, whatever your feeding plan is. Regardless, it is super important once you're done the feed to um, keep your baby upright for a, a good amount of time. I think Amanda had mentioned like 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes is a good amount of time. Now this is gonna feel like a really long time <laughs> when maybe it's three in the morning and you're super tired and all you wanna do is go back to sleep or you maybe even during the day you have a task that you really need to get to. Um, it's it's so important for the baby's well-being and um, eventually, you know, the time afterwards as well that you're going to spend potentially soothing baby who has trapped gas. So the concept behind keeping your baby upright after they've um, been drinking this milk is you're giving an opportunity for the hot gases or air to rise to the top, which it does. If you're gonna lie down your baby, that's just gonna stay uh, trapped in their body. Another thing too, that you're gonna avoid by keeping your baby upright for a good amount of time is spit up, which, you know, if you're drinking a bunch of milk and then you're putting this little baby down, they're probably gonna lose a bit of their lunch um, on, the, on the crib mattress or, or wherever they are. So, you know, you avoid a little bit of mess with that too. And they get to keep all the food inside of their body, which is what you want, right? Because you spent all this time feeding them. So it would kind of not be great for them to lose an ounce or two even. Um, what's the other thing that I wanted to mention around that? 
um, just working with gravity, really. Like, if you think about how you feel after you've eaten, you don't go right away and lie down. I mean, sometimes we do, but we pay for it after. So just think about it that way, like how you feel after you've had a big meal and you go to bed right away. Not so great. Um, that is all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. It's a lot of pieces to put together. <laughs> um, and lastly, we're going to hear from Mandy, who is also a postpartum doula. Hello, good evening, everyone. So I'm talking about massages. So we heard a lot about getting the air out, like through the mouth, through burping, for example, but there's also a way to get the air out um, through the bowels. So with massa massages, we um, use strokes, like I have my baby here, we use strokes to get the um, air, the trapped air downwards towards the bowel so that the air can go out. So before we massage the baby, we um, can assess the baby's mood. So when the baby is calm, when it's alert and content, then it's, it is a good time to massage the baby. So the baby shouldn't be hungry or overtired. Also, we should wait maybe 30 minutes after the baby has eaten because we don't want the baby to vomit. And um, yeah, if the baby seems fussy or uncomfortable, then you should stop the massage because we want the baby to be relaxed and it should be good for the baby. So there are different ways to massage. Like one, one way is to move to massage with your fingers clockwise around the belly button. And we always start on the left. So the baby, like on the left side from our perspective, and then we move our fingertips or you can use your whole hand to massage the belly. And one way is to, for example, to use your right hand to um, like do a full circle from the left side beginning. And then you can, um, after the, your ref, you, you use your right hand, you use your left hand to do a half circle like this, like a crescent. And another way is um, you can use your pinky, the pinky side of your hands and stroke horizontal across the baby's belly. Um, so there are many different ways. You can also, like there are many, many different ways to massage. You can find it on YouTube. And we all know that massages are good for babies and it's also it also helps with the gassiness. And, and when you start with the massage, you can start with a gentle touch. And, and when you see that a baby is really content and enjoy, enjoys it, you can increase the pressure. Other ways um, to, to move the um, air downwards to the bowels is, is, is our bicycle kicks. So you take the legs of the baby and move it like in circles and um, the baby is lying on the back, back, of course, and it also helps to move, um, to move the gas. You can also take both feet and gently move the baby. It's not working with the baby here, but you can gently move the legs from side to side or from uh, top and down. And you can massage your baby any time in the day, not only when the baby might be gassy. And um, a good way is to um, take the massage as a part of the bedtime routine. So you can massage the baby's belly before you um, bring it, uh, um, before you, it has to go to bed, bed. And yeah, you know that all the gas is out for the night and all of you have a good sleep. Thank you, Mandy. Those are great massage tips. <laughs> Um, now at the end of our presentation, we're going to transition into our breakout rooms. So I am going to stop the recording.